Thank you, Jake, uh, for the introduction. My name is uh, Yanis Tsitos. I'm a president and director of Gold Source Mines for a uh, number of years. Um, I'm going to introduce to you the company and our uh, flag project, the Eagle Mountain Gold Project in Ghana. In my contact, as we go down, uh, it will um, present information to people who do not know anything about Gold Source, but also people who follow us for a while, especially the last 16 months after the discovery of Salbora. So I encourage you to, to check the cautionary statements on our webpage. And talking about my talk, my talk flow will um, start introducing the company as a team, uh, an experienced team uh, with a serious track record. As I say here, we, we are one of the first companies within the pandemic that managed to conclude successfully subscribe a financing so we've got uh, 7 million Canadian dollars in the bank, no debt, and we are very well positioned to deliver in the coming quarters. Um, we also have a significant skin in the game as insiders. Why Guyana? And um, I know within your group of companies, we are the only company in, in South America. From this perspective, uh, Guyana has become a hotspot currently in terms of M&A acquisitions, but you know, I work in Guyana since my BHP years uh, for about 18 years now. I follow stories there and I always was excited of this jurisdiction of how safe it is and pro mining. So I want to show you a few uh, thoughts about that and talk, of course, about the new discoveries at Eagle Mountain and finish with my plan and the road ahead in terms of building our critical mass of gold ounces to deliver the new resource outline as a major milestone for this year, and, and therefore subject to success, uh, conclude the feasibility study that we started already from 2018. Um, very briefly here on the team, and I encourage you to go and check us more on our material. Uh, Eric Fear, as uh, Jay said, uh, CEO of Silvercrest Metals, uh, well-known mine engineer, one of the best I know in this industry. Um, uh, he has put six mines in production. Um, I have done a couple of discoveries. I have worked in 32 countries. I'm 30 years explorer and deal maker in this business. Uh, I was 19 years of that with BH. So, uh, well known and traveled all over, uh, in putting, uh, gold and copper and nickel and diamond projects into, uh, almost production phase, uh, with uh, three good success stories. Nick, our CFO, comes from the Canaccord environment, um, a very dynamic young fellow on, on financial modeling and, and capital markets, and three dependent directors that uh, span incredible wealth of uh, wisdom from uh, Whitman Precious Metals and their recently successful Detour Gold acquisition by Kirkland uh, to one of the best corporate governors in this industry. Most importantly, the team in Guyana uh, is... Uh, <laughs> 34 people coming all from I am gold and, 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 and Newman environment. They're all seasoned miners and explorers. So we have more than 95% retention of our team over the last six years. So that shows and speaks to the quality uh, of the team, uh, of the Gaia team we have there, but also of the management. Uh, coming to the capital structure here, we are a $50 million Canadian corporation. We've got $7 million in the bank and no debt uh, as of the end of April. Uh, we concluded the financing this year and uh, another financing last year where Mr. Sprott became the second biggest shareholder of the group at about close to 9%. Uh, every member, uh, at least one member of the management of this company participates in every financing of Goldsworth Mines in the last five years. Uh, more importantly, we have achieved an incredible stock liquidity. Uh, we are not a young company. We have shares out, but we trade also a lot of shares. So we, in the month of April, the average trading day, we were trading 1.7 million shares per day. So that's uh, very significant for somebody to follow us and, and, and invest in Golsos and at the same time have an exit strategy from, from this investment. All right, Guyana, uh, not sure if many people know where Guyana is, uh, but Guyana is part of the Proterozoic uh, shear hosted uh, gold uh, belt that starts from uh, effectively Las Cristinas area in, in Venezuela through the 
and as a northern Brazil spans to West Africa because of the continent being connected at the time of the gold deposition. It is in South America as the only English-speaking country of South America, a secure environment pro-mining that recently discovered tremendous reserves in oil. As I say, Guyana and ExxonMobil are moving, making this country the richest country per capita in the Americas. Not many people know this fact that in five years, they will have more per capita income than any country in Americas. We control 5,000 hectares, about 200 kilometers southwest of the capital town in the historical Oh My Gold Mine area and vicinity. And we can drive to the project or can fly to the project at seven kilometers away from site. And then I can drive you to the camp. We've got 1.2 meg power supply directly from us. We've got three dams, helipads, 65 people camp. So, and all of that within the jungle. All right, coming to Eagle Mountain and the recent discoveries. Um, Eagle Mountain has an story, I mean, an, an N-43 on one uh, resource that is shown on the bottom a left corner here of about a million is between indicated and inferred resources at an average grade of 1.35 grams per ton. This is well outdated. Uh, it was produced in 2014, uh, but we have to show it as the latest uh, uh, compliant resource uh, update we have done. So since that time, we have drilled additional 28,000 meters of drilling, and a new resource outline is well um, uh, expected. Obviously, within 2000, uh, thought 2019, now within 2020, given that in 2019, in the beginning of this year, we had the three discoveries of material that comes at better grade in the vicinity of Eagle Mountain. So before we produce the new resource outline, we thought to explore and uh, see exactly the size of the Salbora discovery. Uh, was announced last year, I repeat here, 69 meters of incline hole, 40 meters of true width, grading 6.5 grams per ton from zero to 69 meters. So surficial stuff, at least 35% of that is in the soft rock, as Jay mentioned, what we call saprolite. Uh, expect that uh, subject to, with a big disclaimer here, of course, subject that this uh, produces an economic outlook uh, in the first three to four years of mine life, we will mine purely saprolite, no blasting of rock. Um, subsequent to that, we did geophysics, a lot of other drilling, and we have had two more discoveries called Pauis and Tucan, one kilometer away of Salbora and about a kilometer away of Eagle on the western side. So all these discoveries come with better grades. So we are pretty confident to say that in the new resource outline, we will add more ounces, we will add better ounces in terms of gold grade, and hopefully we will move significant amount of the inferred resources into indicated because of the infill drill. We're talking about a building, a critical mass of about 1.2 to 1.6 million ounces, greater than a gram, uh, starting from surface and uh, feeding a central processing plant uh, that will be gravity CAL. Metallurgy we have done through the feasibility study at 95% recoveries through SGS in Canada. The strip ratio expected to be very low. Okay, coming to these discovery areas and giving a picture from the helicopter view here, uh, this is our block of land, uh, about 10 kilometers by five kilometers wide. Uh, the purple area is the resource outline or source pits developed in the 2014 PEA. And you see on the red blocks are all these expansion areas that we're working in the jungle. This is all primary jungle. We have to cut roads with our own equipment. And, and, and of course, we control one rig, so we are drilling with our own rig plus two different contractors. So in 2020, the plan was before COVID to employ three rigs, and we plan to do that as soon as we restart following the, uh, the lift of suspending activities at this moment in Guyana. I want to mention a couple of numbers. 14,000 meters drilled last year, 5,000 meters drilled this year in the first three months, all these uh, meters are diamond core, oriented core. Uh, you don't see outcrop on surface. You drive your exploration through your geophysics and also what you see in your lithologies and your analytical sounds from these holes. But what you see on this picture is that the 
north-south trending corridor that you can see here better, that starts from Salbora and goes all the way to Tucan and Paui's targets. The corridor is about two kilometers long and about 50 to 100 meters wide. Uh, we do see significant falls going south, cross-cutted by northeastern 45 degrees to 60 degrees falls that you can see on the middle map here. And in the junctions of these falls, we see the development of the gold deposition and mineralization. Salbora is a classic example. It's about 350 meters long, open in two directions, depth, and we are pretty anxious to bring the rig to the northern side of Salbora and carry on because we control another two kilometers on this line to the north from this map. Of course, to the south, after the discovery of Tucan and Pauis, we feel very positive about the Minnehaha targets. And obviously, we have recently discovered parallel target called Friendly. We haven't announced that analytical samples yet, but as we receive more chemicals from ACT Labs, we are going to do that even during the uh, lockdown COVID period. But anxiously thinking of when we go back to continue drilling with all three rigs. My last slide here is that the two most important milestones for 2020 and first quarter of 2021 will be a new resource outline uh, we were planning to put that J around September, October. I hope, uh, and i take a disclaimer here, given the COVID situation, that we will not push further than Christmas this year. We want to go into the second half of this year pretty solid with drilling with three digs, complete our program, another seven and a half thousand meters, produce the updated resource outline, as I mentioned, and then based on that success, uh, develop reserves and conclude the feasibility study in the first half of next year. A significant amount of environmental work and social work has been done, but more to be done in the next 12 months. I will reserve the rest for some questioning time. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.